Welcome to the lecture series on the poem, A Requiem to Mother Earth by OMB Guru. This is the second part of the lecture series. And in this video, we'll be looking at a detailed analysis of the first few stanzas of the poem. This is the epigraph of the poem. A song of praise for this earth, for its surge of life, for poetry, the essence of its beauty. The poet begins with an evocative epigraph and says that this poem will be a song praising his mother earth. A song of praise for his beloved earth that has sustained all of us, the entire human race and all the other living beings you can see on earth. He celebrates her vitality and the poetry that he sees in her. He views her as the source of all his poetry as it is a magnificent beauty that has aroused the poetic genius in him. So, you can say that the poem is not just for Mother Earth. It is also for the cherished ideals of life, poetry and beauty. This earth not yet dead, in the imminence of your death, may your soul rest in peace. This song I inscribe in my heart today is a requiem to you and to me. The poet is writing a requiem or dirge for his mother nature. Now, what do you mean by a requiem or dirge? It is a song that is sung for the dead. It is a song that is sung at a funeral. It could be a prayer in praise of the dead. And why is he writing this dirge for his mother nature? Because he knows that she's not dead yet, but that day is not far off when she will die. Her death is imminent. Imminent means something that is about to happen very soon. So her death is imminent and the poet therefore writes a heartfelt song for his dear mother as he comes face to face with the sad reality of the end of life on earth. He emphasizes the fact that this dirge that he is addressing to Mother Earth is also a dirge for him. In fact, it is a dirge for the entire human race as none of us will be able to survive without nature to sustain us. When tomorrow you lie benumbed, in the enveloping shadow of the dark poison flower of death. None will be left here, not me either, to, mourn, to moisten your dead lips with our tears. Therefore, I inscribe this to you, Mother Earth, not yet dead, in the imminence of your death, may your soul rest in peace. The poet imagines a bleak and desolate time in the not so distant future when our mother earth will lie numb in the clutches of death. She will lie bereft of all sensations. That is why he uses the phrase, then tomorrow you lie benumbed. She is without any sensations. She is numb all over. And when does one become numb like that? When one meets death, when one is dead. And he imagines the shadow of death slowly creeping upon her and the shadow is cast by the dark and poisonous flower of death. It is ironic to imagine that something as beautiful as a flower can cause you death and the image evoked is that of a flower that is at once beautiful and deadly. But as the mother faces her death, none of her children will be spared either. The children won't be able to mourn their mother properly. They won't be able to bid farewell to her with their tears. Why? Because without the mother, the children too will perish. We too will die without Mother Earth. Humans have to understand that they cannot live without the protective embrace of Mother Earth. And the poet bids an early farewell to his mother. Because death is looming behind it, it is certain that the entire planet is going to its doom. Therefore, the poet wishes to write his dirge while he still has time. 
you mother even to the parai who bore the twelve from whom twelve clans branched bore countless children who could not live in amity you saw them with your own eyes devouring one another you stood helpless shedding unseen silent tears then even as they danced merrily gorging you slice by slice all suffering you stood unprotesting in this stanza the poet refers to the story of parai betta padrugula this is a very popular folk tale in kerala and you can find the story in kotarathil shangunis aithihamala so the story goes like this varaluji a wise brahmin got married to a lower caste parai woman the couple set out on a long pilgrimage and during the course of this journey the couple had 12 children each time a child was born varaluji would ask his wife whether the baby had a mouth and when she replied yes he would ask her to abandon the baby citing the reason that the god who gave the baby a mouth would take care of its hunger as well parai was forced to abandon 11 babies and finally when varaluji inquired about the 12th child she told him that the baby had no mouth so that she can raise at least this baby on her own varaluji agreed to let her take the baby with her however when she looked at the baby she found out that the baby had no mouth this child became the deity known as vailakunilappan and the abandoned babies were later adopted and brought up by 11 different families belonging to various castes so parai vetta pandrugulam thus refers to the progenitors of the various clans who came from parai's womb so the poet here calls mother earth as mother to even the parai who is acknowledged to be a symbol of motherhood like parai mother earth also had countless children who could not live together in unity the unruly children turned on each other and started destroying their own siblings the hapless mother couldn't stop them from these terrible acts she is aghast at the meanness and cruelty of her children but remains helpless to stop them she is forced to watch the scene of destruction with her own eyes and none of the children bother to see their mothers tears her tears are described as silent and unseen as the children refuse to acknowledge her grief the children of mother earth become bloodthirsty demons who merrily dance their dance of death as they start consuming the flesh of their mother they gorge on her flesh gorge means you don't greedily eat something they greedily consume their own mother her flesh as the children continue to slice her flesh the mother stands there with silent tears unprotesting and all suffering she becomes the epitome of divine motherhood she forgives all their crimes and does not protest even when they turn against her parting your soft green mantle you suckled them at your breast as they grew they discovered a strange thirst their last a thirst for the blood of your sacred heart the poet here depicts the children of mother earth as unnatural beings mother earth is imagined as wearing a cloak of greenery around her body the poet is metaphorically referring to the forests and plants forming a green mantle around earth even when the mother tries to suckle her children at her breast they discard this gesture of love and yearn greedily for her blood the savage children are not happy with the mother's milk they prefer her blood the poet ironically comments that this would very well be the last thirst that they develop as they don't seem to realize that without the mother they too would cease to exist the poet also draws a stark contrast here a contrast between the forgiving and sacrificing nature of the divine mother and the cruel and bestial nature of the demonic children o oh mother favorite bride of the sun you lost even the bridal finery he gave you 
They tore it to shreds, they clothed at your bare body, they feasted on the gushing blood. The rhythm of death resounds everywhere as they swirl in their frenzied dance. The poet describes Mother Earth as the favorite bride of sun, regal in her beauty and charm. Yet she has lost even the bridal finery that sun had bestowed on her. How did she lose this? She lost it because of her savage children who took it away from her. The poet is referring to how the various resources of earth are ravaged by human beings. The unnatural children tear their mother's beautiful clothes and attack her naked body with their vicious clothes. As the mother's blood oozes out of the wounds inflicted by the children, they drink it greedily. They are not affected by remorse or guilt over their actions. Instead, they seem to celebrate this new rhythm of death by dancing their mad dance. The poet paints a haunting picture, a very disturbing picture, wherein the mother lies dying and the demonic children celebrate her death with their delirious and savage dance. As the mother lies on the verge of death, all life on earth will also come to a standstill. And that is why the poet says that the rhythm of death is everywhere. The story of the young Greek who unwittingly married his mother is dated. The children of Mother Earth, they who strip her naked, script a new version of the old story. What they strip, they sell in the market for a drink. The villain's clothes, the axe plays on and on. In this stanza, the poet mentions the story of the young Greek who unwittingly married his mother. This is the story of Oedipus, who was born as the son of Laius and Jocasta of Thebes. When Oedipus was born, it was prophesied that he would kill his father and marry his mother. Laius therefore decided to kill the baby and handed him over to a servant. However, the servant left the baby in a forest and in some versions uh, it's a mountain. And from the forest, the baby was found by a shepherd. The shepherd gifted the baby to the neighboring king of Corinth, who was childless. And this king brought him up as his own child. When Oedipus grew up, he learned about the prophecy and he was horrified and he ran away as he didn't know that he was adopted. And on his way to Thebes, he got into a fight with an old man and killed him without knowing that it was his father, Laius. Oedipus reached the kingdom of Thebes and found the throne vacant. And he married Jocasta, the queen of the old king in order to claim the throne. He had several children by her. And after that, when a plague fell on the kingdom, everybody wondered as to what really happened. And then the truth is revealed by the blind prophet Tiresias. When she came to know of the truth, Jocasta committed suicide and Oedipus was so devastated that he blinded himself and went to live in exile. So the poet brings in the reference to this story as he wants to emphasize the sacred bond between a mother and her child. See, Oedipus married his mother or he committed the unpardonable crime of marrying his own mother in ignorance. He didn't do it on purpose. So even in that ancient story, the crime was committed out of genuine ignorance. Oedipus never knew that Jocasta was his mother. But look at the children of Mother Earth who are rewriting the old story and creating their own terrible version. This modern version is even more disturbing because the children suffer no pangs of conscience as they deliberately rape and pimp their mother. The savage offspring willfully molest their mother and then sell her honor for trivial pleasures. Here, the image is especially gruesome as the children are shown selling their mother in the market for liquor. Here, the poet says, 
when they strip what they strip they sell in the market for a drink that is how the children of mother earth treat her the point is here referring to the various ways in which we exploit nature and her resources he makes a specific reference to the evil of deforestation he talks about the villain's claw or the axe that goes on chopping trees mother earth is now naked and cowering in shame as her children have taken away her clothes her honor and her dignity the eyes of the blazing sun show rays of fiery fury june clouds hunt for drinking water december nights hunt for cold april dawns hunt for a tiny flower sylvan rivers hunt for swirling currents the rhythm of creation is shattered the wheels of the chariot of life are stuck on their course your sweet memories are all i have till the last dregs of sense remains in me i who took shape from you and from you took life now we have the image of a world that has lost its natural order everything in nature has lost its balance due to the abusive nature of human beings sun is here portrayed as an angry presence in the sky as he lets his displeasure know why is he angry why is he so furious he is angry with the children of mother earth for destroying her in an earlier stanza mother earth had been described as the favorite bride of sun in this unnatural world that we have made out of our greed that we have fashioned out of our greed everything has lost its rhythm december nights are no longer cold december is the month associated with winter season and yet the poet now says december nights are no longer cold april mornings no longer bear witness to beautiful spring flowers april is the month that is associated with spring season the season of fruits and flowers and yet now you can't see a single flower in april and the rivers in the shady forests no longer have water the rhythm of the natural world has been destroyed and the wheels of the chariot of life are no longer moving it is stuck and this stagnation is harmful for all life on earth and yet humans don't seem to care the poet solemnly assures the mother of his unflinching loyalty and says that he cherishes her sweet memories as his most prized possession he will treasure these memories as long as he is alive he says till the last dregs of sense remains in me dregs here mean balance or residue the poet acknowledges that he owes everything his life his inspiration everything to mother earth without her the poet cannot exist so we come to the end of our second lecture on the poem a requiem to mother earth in the next lecture we will be completing the detailed analysis of the poem thank you